Hare Krishna, Goranga. So we're just going to get another re 30 key verses class in. Uh, we are now up to the last one in Chapter 3, Karma Yoga. So this is Text 337. Again, a very famous one, as they all are, but particularly of the 30 key verses, this is one of the, 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 the most popular ones that you would hear. Uh, why? Because it's establishing what is one of the, the key reasons of our difficulty in material life uh, and spiritual life, of course, also is lust. Uh, lust is the um, kind of like the ball and chain that wraps around the centre of everything that comes out of ourselves. Uh, so let's have a little look, see what Krishna says about it. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So it's in its chapter 3, Kama Yoga, text 37. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kamaesha Kodaesha Raja Gunasamudbhavaha Mahashano Mahapapma Vidinam Ihavairinam The Supreme Person of God had said, It is not only Arjuna, which is born of contact with the material mode of passion and later transformed into wrath, and which is the all devouring sinful enemy of this world. Purport by the Divine Grace of the Key. When a living entity comes in contact with the material creation, his eternal love for Krishna is transformed into lust in association with the mode of passion. So, first simple point here. Um, when we are in contact with material nature, then this is when this lust develops further and further. We heard from the last class, Prakriti Kriya Mani Gunaitamani Sabasaha, Ahankara Vimudar Makata Nitimani Te, that this false ego, Ahankara, is leading us to think that we are independent, but actually we're being controlled by the three modes of material nature. And the most dangerous mode is the mode of ignorance. That mode of ignorance, as we hear, and we're going to hear here, transforms into wrath. So we have to rise up out of these three modes of material nature and into pure goodness. Um, and of course, if we're in that, if we're in those modes of material nature, and we're being swung about in the material world, then we are going to get further and further trapped by this enemy known as lust. So we'll see here what Sri Prabhupada says. Or in other words, the sense of love of God becomes transformed into lust as milk in contact with sour tamarind is transformed into yogurt. So material, material speaking, the feeling is lust. Spiritual, it's love. So true love in the material world becomes clouded by lust, basically speaking. Then again, when lust is unsatisfied, it turns into wrath. Wrath is transformed into illusion, and illusion continues the material existence. So this is a very simple stages here, that um, we get so deep into ignorance, we become illusioned. And this is this point about becoming conditioned in the material world, that uh, as we go further down, we lose sight of where we started. You know, the path is completely scattered. Um, there's a, there's a, I just thought about this now, it popped in my head, that there's a, a point in the, if you've ever read the book, The Hobbit, and uh, they're saying when they're going through this forest, they say, don't go off the path because the woods are so vast you'll get completely lost. And as they go off to, to escape uh, an attack from some party of elves, they end up into the woods. And of course, what happens? They get lost. And it's so dense and so dark and so vast, they never find their way back onto the path again. So it's almost like that in the material world. We just step off to the side for a little bit. Some flitting um, illusion catches our eye. And then boom, we go off for miles and miles, years and years and years on end. <clears throat> and uh, it's so easy as well, because we, we said that, you know, Prabhupada made that point in, in the last purport. Um, and I heard this also in one of his classes as well, that... Uh, in fact, no, sorry, it wasn't in the proper, it wasn't in, it was in one of Prabhupada's classes, actually, sorry. That he, he basically said that this, these modes of material nature, so there's goodness, there's passion, then there's uh, mixed goodness and passion and ignorance, and then there's ignorance on its own. So there's mix of these modes as well. But then we want to get out of the three or four or five, however, you kind of mix them up. But then we want to get into the Sudha Sattva, which is pure goodness, which is where Krishna consciousness starts to, to come from. 
So it says, therefore, lust is the greatest enemy of the living entity, and it is lust only which induces the pure living entity to remain entangled in the material world. Wrath is the manifestation of the mode of ignorance. These modes exhibit themselves as wrath and other corollaries. Now, what that's kind of saying is like what comes out of anger is this things like a, a vindictive mentality or an or addictive nature as, as, a, as an example of the mode of ignorance where that we're, we're so strongly desiring to have something. We spoke about attachment previously as well, right? You're strongly desiring something. Even if it's unhealthy for you, 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 get, you want it because you can't get it. Comes that frustration, that anger. Um, and uh, this very quickly can happen. That when you lose the temper, you lose sight of everything. Yeah? And then it says here, if therefore the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting, then one can be saved from the degradation of wrath by spiritual attachment. So the more we stay in the spiritual atmosphere, by chanting Hare Krishna, by reading Sri Prabhupada's books, or other books by our uh, senior Vaishnavas, etc., you know, by the more we perform some devotional activities, you know, through our daily worship or whatever it is, to, to cook for the days, you know, to bring up our family, so on. We, we know we know the general activities. If we perform more devotional service and keep in that spiritual attachment, then we can keep away from getting swept off, you know, into material lust, uh, the material lust mindset, you know. The Supreme Person of God had expired himself into many for his ever-increasing spiritual bliss, and the living entities are parts and parcels of the spiritual bliss. They also have partial independence, but by misuse of their independence, when the service attitude is transformed into the propensity for sense enjoyment, they come under the sway of this lust. So here we can see there is some hope for us. Again, Prabhupada is mentioning we are parts and parcels of Krishna, which means our duty is to reconnect to serving Krishna and being in that relationship with him. It again emphasizes this point, we misused what we had. And now we know about Krishna consciousness, especially for devotees. Um, we know Krishna consciousness is the real deal. We know the philosophy, we know how to, to kind of, we know where the steps are and how to walk on them. You know, don't misuse it this time around, you know. Let's really try to not get caught up again in this mundane lust. Because it's just like, you know, it's just like betraying your own self in that sense. And obviously we're turning our back on the Lord again for another time. And it says, this material creation is created by the Lord to give facility to the conditioned souls to fulfill these lustful propensities. So that this idea of if we try to be the enjoyer, we try to be the controller, right? The false ego that we're independent, you know. We do have some independence, but we, we already discussed again how dependent we actually are. So with our independence, I guess, is, is that we can choose to so-called go off, you know. But actually, we should use the dependence to say, no, actually, I would like to serve. And that's what Krishna's waiting for, that we would like to. Not that he's going to force us to do it. That's the dependence and dependence thing, you know. This material creation is useless. When completely baffled by prolonged lustful activities, the living entities begin to inquire about their real position. So this is one of the, the, the aspects of um, coming back to Krishna, that when we're completely defeated, we then put our hands up and say, okay, there's got to be something out there that can help me. There's got to be a supreme source, a supreme person. There's got to be a supreme process, a supreme book, a supreme mantra. And that's when we start to inquire. So when you're completely finished, materially exhausted, then we say, okay, that's it, you know, what else can I do now? You know, so let's not get to that point. We don't want to always go the painful route. Let's uh, make that endeavor to look for Krishna and to connect with Krishna well before it gets to that stage. This inquiry is the beginning of the Vedanta Sutras, wherein it is said, Tato Brahmati Gyasa, one should inquire into the Supreme. And the Supreme is defined in Shri Bhagavatam as Janma Dasya Yato Nirayadi Tarascha, or the origin of everything is the Supreme Brahman. Therefore, the origin of lust is also in the Supreme. If therefore lust is transformed into love for the Supreme, or transformed into Krishna consciousness, or in other words, desiring everything for Krishna, then both lust and wrath can be spiritualized. Now, we said, of course, that that idea is that 
you know, lost in the spiritual sense is love. They become mad in love for Krishna. They become mad for the process of Krishna consciousness, for hearing the holy name. You know, that I had this uh, story in a in a lecture um, by Bhakti Chaitanya Swami, and about how um, obviously Krishna's lotus feet. Everybody's saying his lotus feet are so sweet. Krishna's so sweet. They to touch the dust of his feet and so on. So obviously this past name of um, Mark and Dea Rishi in the twelfth canto of the Shrimad Bhagavatam, where Krishna's sucking on his own toe. And he says that oh everybody all these great sages and the pure devotees are saying that you know my lotus feet are so sweet so I want to taste that nectar. Um, so he, he puts his toe in his mouth, you know? and uh, we, this, this is why the holy name when we connect to the holy name and we really experience really good japa, we feel that it's so sweet. Why? Because Krishna's so sweet. Even uh, the one other story came where um, when uh, Jatila and Kutila. They go looking to split up Radha and Krishna's pastimes. Uh, they know that Krishna was there. So Radha, although Radha Rani manages, although Krishna and Radha Rani managed to hide, and Radha Rani kind of st- stands there and looks like nothing's happened, looks innocent, they know Krishna was there because they can smell the sweetness of Krishna's presence. So this is the supreme person of Godhead. He is beautiful, sweet. You know his his pastimes are nectarian. So his chanting his name is also nectarian. Hearing these books about him is nectarian. My uh, my guru Maharaj Ananda Goswami he made a nice point, and also again another class I was just hearing while doing some activities around the house. He said um, the the, the thirty three thirty three thousand eight hundred sages were there at uh, Naima Sharanya hearing the words of Shukadev Goswami, and every one of them was able to hear, and every one of them was fully wrapped in attention. How is that possible? There was no m- megaphone, mm-hmm. there was no slideshows, there was no screens projecting or anything like that. They just sat there and they said they hadn't eaten. You know, he says, even we come to a, a class at the morning program in a temple and we sit maybe 10, 15, 20 devotees. You know, we haven't had breakfast because we've been up since four. You know, and we're all f- falling asleep and flailing about all over the place. He says, but they sat there that whole entire time for those seven days and heard the whole full Srimad Bhagavatam without any prasharam and they were wrapped in attention to hear so a different kind of taste this is transforming the, the lust and wrath into spiritual nature um, so this is a, a desire everything for Krishna's pleasure Hanuman the great servitor of the Lord Ram exhibited his wrath by burning the golden city of Ravan but by doing so he became the greatest devotee of the Lord here also in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord induces Arjuna to engage his wrath upon his enemies for the satisfaction of the Lord. Therefore, lust and wrath, when they are employed in Krishna consciousness, become our friends instead of our enemies. Uh, I guess an example that you could mention there is that um, we should become angry to defend Krishna consciousness if need be, if you know our devotee is insulted, or if um, you know the Krishna conscious philosophy is being misrepresented or so on and so forth, we should actually become, you know, we should galvanize ourselves to, to defend it by presenting, you know. One, uh, one of the uh, ways when, when a, a Vaishnava is offended is uh, the Sanatana Goswami mentions that we should cut off their tongue or we should, you know, if we become contaminated, we should jump in the, the river and, and end our own selves. Well, of course, those are very extreme examples, but the other one was either you should actually try to defeat them. So devotees, you know, if devotees should be actually capable enough to properly understand our philosophy and present this philosophy. And this is one of the reasons of, of, this is one of the benefits of preaching. We now have this, well we have had it for many years, but we have this tool that's now one of the, the only ways we can present Krishna consciousness is because of this COVID pandemic. We have this YouTube, we have Facebook Live, we have Teams, we have um, Zoom, uh, Instagram, you know, we can even tweet it, whatever it is, we, we, can, pre- we can present uh, this Krishna conscious philosophy to whatever, not, to whatever degree we have the knowledge. We won't all be able to um, speak like our greatest devotees in our movement or Srila Prabhupada himself. Um, but we can certainly come on for two or three minutes and just share something that we, we heard, you know, or we can share something that we know. And uh, this is a, a really nice way just for us to all come on and pop something in there, you know. Um, but uh, this is another one covered. Um, another one of the 30 key verses. We'll continue to try and do a few more of these over the next few weeks.
and uh, as I said, hopefully we can we can continue to get something out of this. We'll go off, have a bit more of a look into these purports, study them, um, link up the different verses that comes with it. Uh, although these, of course, these thirty key verses are the main prominent ones. Some of the shlokas before or after or around in those chapters enhance that particular verse further. So please go off, read the Bhagavad Gita. Devotees, you know, obviously, I would assume and hope that you're reading it every day. You know, if you're not, dust it off, have a look at it. And for those out there who are maybe seeing this for the first time, then absolutely give this Bhagavad Gita a go. Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Krantaraj Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Nitai Gora Karnandi Hari Haribo.